Okay, welcome to uh, our next mini lecture, and I'll be talking to you about dark matter and supersymmetry, and how this, these uh, concepts try uh, to help us ask questions about the universe and ask, uh, answer some of these questions of the universe. So our universe is a dark universe. As I said before, only about 5% of the universe is composed of the standard model particles that we know and love. 27% uh, of it is something called dark matter, and this is matter, it, it's, uh, it's got mass, we can see its gravitational effects, but we have no idea what it is. And uh, about 68% of it is dark energy, and I won't say anything about that here because we have even less idea what it is. Now there's a lot of evidence out there for dark matter, and I think personally dark matter is very, very cool. Um, it's one of the things that got me into studying high energy physics. And there's a, lot of en um, there's a lot of evidence out there for dark matter. So one of the things I'd like to show you here is a picture, or a, a composed picture, of, a, uh, of the bullet cluster. And this is two clusters of galaxies colliding with one each other and passing through. Now we have taken this picture with two types of camera. The first um, is using x-rays, uh, using telescopes and x-rays, and with that we can see the interacting standard model uh, particle matter, and that's lit up there in pink. So as these clusters of galaxies pass through each other, the interacting matter, the standard model particles there in pink, basically interact and slow down. But when we have a look at the bullet cluster with gravitational lensing instead to see where the uh, gravitational effects of the matter of these galaxies, uh, these clusters of galaxies lies, we find that there's far more matter there. And in fact, most of the matter, as these clusters of galaxies pass through each other, didn't interact with each other at all and just passed on beyond as the rest of our standard model particles slowed down. So this was a smoking gun of dark matter and really gave us a, a lot of hope that it is actually something out there and not one of our misunderstandings about gravity. So the, one of the first uh, pieces of evidence that came up for dark matter was the uh, observation of how galaxies rotate. In fact, they were rotating far faster than we expected. So fast, in fact, that uh, the matter inside those galaxies should have been flung out. A bit like if you're on a roundabout that's going too fast. If you're not holding on strong enough with your gravitational effects, there's not enough matter there, you'll be flung off. And so this was, um, this was thought to be dark matter. There was much more um, matter inside these galaxies than we could see from the visible stars or any of the, the photons coming out from the matter that we could see there. Um, and then we've also got the cosmic microwave background radiation, which is um, a kind of uh, leftover from the very early universe when the universe became transparent to light. Um, so it's a very ancient light of the universe. You can see it if you turn one of the old televisions on as that black and white um, snow effect. That is the cosmic microwave background radiation. And we can take a very, very careful look at this light in, in very high amount of detail. And it's telling us how much matter and of how much type, uh, or of what type there is in the universe. It tells us that only 5% of our universe is matter that we know of. And about 26, 27% of it is dark matter. And it tells us about the curvature of our universe as well and about dark, uh, dark energy. So we've got a lot of different sources of evidence of dark matter, but our standard model, the particles we know about, don't offer any suitable candidates. We've either got uh, particles that have electric charge that we should be able to see with interactions with photons, or we have particles that are unstable and wouldn't live on the lifetime of our universe and be present there in galaxies as dark matter. Or perhaps neutrinos, these ghostly particles, could be responsible, but we'd need so many of them, and because they're so light, we'd need so many of them, and they'd be travelling at almost the speed of light, because they're, they're almost massless, and they would essentially wash out all of the structure that we see in our universe. So we don't have any viable candidate for this. It really is a mystery. All we know is that it must be stable, very heavy, long-lived, and very, very, very weakly interacting. Now, when we don't have any information, <laughs> or we're missing a piece of the puzzle, 
in uh, particle physics. We usually introduce a new concept or for a new symmetry or a new particle to try and fill our holes in the knowledge. For example, when we didn't know where the mass of particles uh, was coming from, the Higgs mechanism was proposed and we discovered the Higgs boson. When we uh, didn't understand some of the negative energies that were coming out of our equations, we didn't understand the concept of negative energy, the idea of antimatter was proposed, and lo and behold, there was the positron as the antimatter particle of the electron. We've also um, come up with new particles like the top quark and the W and Z bosons also to explain um, hole in our knowledge and lo and behold we went and found them in our experiments. So this is a historically it's a very successful way of trying to fill holes in our knowledge. So what we can try and do here is introduce a new symmetry between our matter and our force particles between fermions and bosons in the standard model. And this would mean that for each one of our particles in the standard model, there would be a, a new partner, we'll call it a super partner, a new shadowy super partner for every particle that we know about. And this gives us a lot of hope. There's, there's no reason not to introduce this symmetry, but it gives us a lot of hope because it gives us a lot of new heavy particles to go and look for. And some of them can offer excellent explanations for some of our questions about the universe. So this is supersymmetry. So we've got our, our standard model particles here on the left, the ones we know about, our, our, our quarks, our leptons and our bosons and our Higgs boson there. And now we have a whole set of supersymmetric particles. We've got squarks partnering our standard model quarks, sleptons for our standard model sleptons, and all sorts of gluinos and charginos and neutralinos. We have very exotic names for these. Now, the, the point is, is that a rich, a rich array of particles is now predicted that I can go away and look for in our experiments. And we can have, we, when we delve into the properties of these new particles we're predicting, one is actually an excellent dark matter candidate. That's ringed there in yellow and red. It's very stable, it's neutral, it's heavy, it's long-lived, and very, very weakly interacting. It's an excellent dark matter candidate. So it could be that most of our universe is actually made up of a supersymmetric particle. So how can we go out and find out more about this dark matter, be it a supersymmetric particle or not? Now with dark matter, its very ghostly nature presents a real challenge in going to, to find it and understand more of it. We've only seen it through its gravitational interactions so far. So we're trying to, to have a look for dark matter with uh, three different ways. We can either break it, shake it or make it. Now with breaking it, we're trying to have a look at the dark matter candidate particles in the center of galaxies or in the center of the sun, where we hope they're clumping together, that they might annihilate, giving us some very high energy photons. That's breaking it. We could shake it. We as people and as a planet and as a solar system are traveling through right now the dark matter in the Milky Way. So we're actually going through a dark matter wind right now. And we're looking for those very rare very, very rare um, collisions of dark matter particles with normal matter. But I, as a, as a particle physicist who work on collider experiments, I'm trying to make it. I'm taking standard model particles, smashing them together at very high energies, hoping to make dark matter particles and see the signature of those. And so my search for dark matter, or supersymmetric particles, be they the same thing, is done using the Large Hadron Collider and the ATLAS experiment there. So I'll be telling you more about that, how I'm trying to look for these dark matter candidates in these collisions.